All right, so I'm going to start off by saying Brakate Yahawa, Brakate Yahawa Shai, Brakate Yahawa, Brakate Yahawa Shai, Brakate Yahawa, Brakate Yahawa Shai, Kohola Yahawa, Bahashem Yahawa Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. <clears throat> Double honors to the apostles of GMS who rule well and who taught me this truth. And uh, shalom to you, Sincere Akiam, out there listening, learning, and pushing this truth. And uh, shalom to the few Sincere Akwath out there listening and learning as well. With that being said, I'm going to jump straight into this uh, video epistle, this lesson, Lord's will. It'll be edifying. As usual, I'm going to go in the uh, Raka Kwadash. Uh, for the record, today's date is March 31st, 2021, the year of hastening the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, it's going to be a real quick one. I'm gonna just, I got this little video I'm going to place. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna play it in its entirety. I'm gonna play a little bit of what um, this. Uh, I guess his name is Feds, Harker. Harker. All right. I'm gonna play a little bit of what he says. But what caught my eye was um, because you know I'm always keeping as a watchman. We should always be watching. You know, watching the news, measuring the time diligently. You know, you know, you know the spiel. All right. And I was looking into the economy because I noticed myself that a lot of things are. Um, being um, inflated, you know, hyperinflation, you know, go look that word up, you know, and we know that that has to take place because um, Esau Edom is trying to crash this economy so that way he can usher in this new digital system, which is going to be spearheaded by the uh, Karagma, the mark of the beast per Revelation 13 and 16, the RFID microchip, the hour of temptation. We know where that day is drawing nigh. Okay, we're close to that. You know, all roads are leading to the Karagma, all right? So <clears throat> this um, <clears throat> inflation, hyperinflation is a key sign, okay? You know, that's a key uh, a key flag, you know? So um, anyway, I was watch looking up some videos, uh, and I, found I stumbled across this one here, and I saw in the comments from this guy here, Ray Bod, four days ago. You know, this is an older gentleman, probably an Edomite. <clears throat> he says... Uh, <clears throat> Salakia. <clears throat> Salakia. He says, I'm 63 years old and never seen transitory infant and never seen transitory inflation. Once inflation gets hold gets a hold in the economy, it continues to get worse until interest rates rise dramatically. Exactly. That's hyperinflation. Okay. And that's what's gonna happen ultimately. You know, Babylon the Great is fallen. It's fallen. It can't be healed, man. Okay, you can't make America great again. This place is circling the drain, and if you're paying attention to the economy, you can clearly see what time it is, man. You know, the stimulus package was nothing but a lifeline. Uh, 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 you know, this place is through. When you look at these uh, chief financial advisors, they're saying that um, this time is, you know, we're in a, we're in a great depression. You know, this time is worse than um, when with the housing crash, 2007, 2000, whenever that was. You know, that's what they're saying, you know. This place is through. You know, it's holding on by by, by, by um, barely, you know. Like I said, it's circling the drain, okay. So um, let me let me bring out Habakkuk. That way you can just hear, hear the uh, the video, you know. And remember, these, these devils are, are liars, man. You know, they talk with a forked tongue. The scriptures say the wicked are estranged from the womb. They're born speaking lies. If you look at this guy's mannerisms... When he's speaking, when they ask him certain questions, and the way he's looking, he's lying, man. He knows this place is through. They know it's through, okay? Hey, the quantitative easing, I think that's what they called it, when they were pumping the money into these corporations overnight. This place is through, okay? Through. All we got to do is hold on, keep pushing, keep fighting. Fighting that good fight of faith, man. <clears throat> Um, this is Habakkuk. The main point is going to be in verse 6, but I'll start at uh, the top. Habakkuk 2 and 1, okay? Because we are the Lord's watchmen, okay? Lord's willing, we keep enduring, we, we be those men, okay? And our job is to watch and warn the people, okay? It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and will watch and see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord Yahweh answered me, and he and said, <clears throat> Salakia, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. 
and, and we know it's plain, man. It's obvious. If you got the eye saw of the sea, it's obvious what times are in. We're at the end. All right? All roads, like we said, are leading to the Karagma, the RFID microchip. Okay? You know, gradualism, order out of chaos, problem, reaction, solution. You know? For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Okay? But at the end it shall speak, and it's speaking, it's not lying. Okay? You know? And not lie. It says, though it tarry, wait for it. All right? Though it seem like it's taking forever, though it seem like we're never going to get out of here. Hey, we are, man. We're at the end. Our redemption is nigh. It's even nearer than we believe. You know? Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Okay? This is uh, verse 4. Behold, his soul is just talking about Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Yeah, that's why we say he can't get right. He's the crooked man. All right? You know, and remember, there's no place of repentance for him, you know, though he sought it carefully with tears. The, hey, he going to get his, his, that recompense, you know, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. That's the patience and the faith of the saints, man. You know, and that's what we waiting for, patiently waiting for, waiting to be redeemed by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that redemption is drawing nigh. This place is through. Okay. It's on life support. Okay, it's circling the goddamn drain. It's holding on by a thread. And the economy is a prime example. But the just, it's a slack. It says, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just, that's talking about us. The hopeful elect of Israel, Yasharala. Okay, the just shall live by his faith. All right, and that's a gift from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, and we walk by faith, not by sight. You know? We trust you, how about you, how shy? As long as we're being obedient, hey, Lord will, the Lord, the Lord got us, man, you know? This is um, verse 5, going into Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, okay, that's his philosophies, okay? He is a proud man, go read Obadiah, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death. He's the harbinger of death, you know, and cannot be satisfied, yeah cannot man but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people okay <clears throat> that's what ultimately he's trying to do establish this one world order this cashless society this global reset that's going to be led by the karagma okay you see the rfid microchip shall not all these take up a parable against him and they taunt that's talking about your and yeah that's what's going to ultimately happen man your allies are going to turn, turn on you, man. Okay? You know? And burn this place with fire. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, this is the main point, woe to him that, woe means destruction, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay, and that means your debts. Okay? I bought you. Let's go to it. You know? You know? A lot. Strong's H fifty six seventy one. Have teat. Have teat. Okay. That should be I bought ya. It says thick clay. It says weight of pledges, heavy debts. Okay. You know your usury, your interest. You know. And that's what's gonna be your undoing, your demise, man. You know. Hey, but but it's all part of the agenda, man, to usher in this new system, man. Okay? You know? That's what it is. Everything is going cashless, but they got to do away with this fiat money. Okay? This, you know, the paper dollars. It's going to be a thing of the past. All right? <clears throat> so, again, like I said, this is the um, the comment that caught my eye from Ray Bod four days ago. It says, uh, I'm 63 years old and never seen transitory inflation. Once inflation gets a hold in the economy, and if you best believe, that motherfucker done laid root, okay? You know? It's so much that they got to be pumping uh, money into the economy overnight, into these different corporations, man. And, and, and we all know what, why that happened, man. You know? Chiefly because of that, um, how, how do I say it? Um, that thing, man. That jab and, the, and that, the thing that's going around. You know, a lot of people got laid off, you know? Think, think about it. A lot of that that slowed up a lot, man. You know, a lot of people are unemployed. You know, 
the the economy was already circling the drain, and that that just for, you know was fueled to the fire, man. You see, so hey, you best believe that inflation doesn't lay root. So as this older gentleman said, I'm 63 years old and never seen trends because this is the end, man. Esau is the end of the world. You know, Jacob is the beginning of it that followed the end of an empire, age of rulership. Okay, we at the end, baby. You see, and he know he's going to come down hard body because he know he had but a short time. This is his last hoorah, his, you know? You know? It says once inflation gets a hold in the, in the economy, it continues to get worse. <clears throat> you can't heal Babylon until interest rates rise dramatically. Let's look at some of the replies. Uh, what did you say? Uh, scoffer. That's a scoffer. All right, let's see. I've yeah, also had... Ah, uh, let me see. Let me see. This one might be. Okay, this is a good one. It says, at Saul Perlata, or whatever the hell, however the hell you say that. 100 years ago, $20 bought an ounce of gold. When I first started working, at work in minimum wage was $1.60 an hour. That should tell you there's always inflation. Price. Prices seem to be doubling about every three, 30 years. Inflation is probably faster now with government spending going up by trillions of dollars every year. Exactly. It's, if you look at, if you want to see a prime example of, of a hyperinflated economy, go look at what happened, what's going on in Venezuela. Okay? You know, you got to go to go to the store. You, you need a damn a fucking uh, uh, um, a wheelbarrow of money to go to the store to get some groceries, man. Okay? You see? That's, that's that's what's going to be happening, man. You can see it right now in the car economy, the used car economy. If you go to buy a used car, cars that are pieces of shit with hundreds of thousands of miles are, are going for double the price that they normally would. Why? Because the economy is being inflated. There's a lot of uh, fake money that's being pumped into the economy. A lot of people are holding money, okay, that shouldn't be holding money, okay? The same thing like with the housing market back in 2007, whatever, you know, that's what happened. Those people were holding homes, multiple homes on top of that, trying to flip it and come up that couldn't afford to pay for those homes, you know? So when the, when the bill came due, when that grace period was over, okay, just like you see happening with the the uh, um, the, the eviction moratorium, whatever you call it, you see that the bill is becoming due and a lot of people are being put out. When this bill comes due, okay, this bubble is going to pop, man, and it's going to be a big explosion, it's going to be, you ain't going to be able to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And that's Jacob's trouble, man. That's where we're at the door. All hell is about to break loose. Okay? Famine, martial law, uh, civil unrest, um, all, type of, all type of hell, man. Okay? A time like never before per Daniel 12 and 1. And like I said, this economy is a telltale sign. we at the end. All right? Repent. The doors of mercy are drastically closing, man. All right? So I'm gonna play some of this and I'll close out, man. I don't want to write this out. I was edifying. I hope I hope my point was um, drilled because I'm not the best uh, when it comes to talking about speaking about finances, man. But I un I can clearly see what the hell is going on. You know, it's obvious. Hey, as it says, the, though it Terry uh, Salaki, what did it say? It said, um, "How about your mouth?" Because it's not us. We're just the Lord's mouthpiece, man. There's messengers. You see, it's your how about Shimmy how Shai is making it plain. He's making it obvious, just like he's making it obvious amongst y Yasharala, amongst Israel, the, the men that are right and the men that aren't right. You know, you know, the, 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 you know, that's why we give double honors to our elders, man, the, the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and do rule well and continue to rule well, man. You see, for 30 years plus, them, you know, elder apostles to har on down, they've been laboring. And, and it's evident, you know, these different alphabet groups that ain't right man you know I'm, I'm that's all i'm gonna say on that man you know what the hell i'm talking about you know you know anyway it says and the lord yahweh habakkuk two and two and the lord yahweh answered me and said write this write the vision and make it plain upon tables it's plain it's obvious we at the end okay we are at the end our redemption draw nigh that he may run that readeth it for the vision is yet for an appointed time and we're in that time but at the end it shall speak. We're at the end and not lie. It's obvious. 
Okay, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Everything the Lord said, Yahabashim Yahushai said, is coming to pass. He said he was going to start with, uh, uh, judgment was going to start with Israel, the ancient men. That's why you see all these different camps, all these different uh, people that exalted themselves, they're being exposed, man. And the true men are being exalted. The true men are, are you know, that are sincerely out here warning you, it's being made evident and obvious. You know, who ain't in this for filthy lucre or fame and all this bullshit? You know, it's obvious. We at the end repent. The doors of mercy are drastically closing. All right, so this is off of Bloomberg Markets and Finance. It says, uh, Fed's Harker doesn't see inflation running out of control. Yeah, because the, the pride of his heart have deceived him, man. He's a, he's an Edomite. He appears to be, you know, you know. His inward thought is that his houses shall continue forever, man. You know, that's what Psalms tells you. They don't think they're ever going to go down. But you could see through his mannerisms, he knows what's up. The only Fed index that came out this month was the highest for prices paid since 1980. Uh, do you anticipate a really, really rapid rise in prices? Is that what people in your district are telling you? No, that's not what we're hearing across the board. We are seeing in certain pockets like manufacturing uh, their supply, they're seeing price uh, price pressures. But what they're not doing is uh, planning on passing much of that along to their consumer, uh, to their end customer. So I think it's uh, the inflation story is complicated. As you said, we're going to see March, April drop off. Uh, they were low months, obviously, because we were shutting down the economy. So we're going to see a spike in inflation. But I think we're, our forecast is for inflation to creep up to 2%. And our goal is to have it hit above 2% this year. Our forecast is around 2.1%, but we don't see it running out of control. Uh, what about the idea that um, on the spending side, uh, people are reluctant to go out? What are you hearing in, in Philadelphia? We're getting more jabs in arms, and yet yep. we see uh, personal spending decline in the month of February. It's been choppy, right, because the, the virus has uh, been variable. We've had good months, bad months, we're seeing numbers rise now uh, in this region. And so until we get through this period, we're going to see a lot of volatility in all these measures. And that makes them hard to read. So for me as a policymaker, in that kind of situation, I want to hold steady, make sure we get through this period. Then we can start to normalize once we get through this. When you say get through this period, how long do you think it lasts? Well, again, if you talk to epidemiologists, not economists, uh, they'll say sometime in the fall, we should start to get herd immunity. I'm a little concerned, though. Some of the things we're hearing right now is vaccine hesitancy is real. We even hear this from our healthcare contacts, right? Healthcare workers themselves are reluctant to get the vaccine. So we need to make sure we... That's what it's all about right there. I'm going to be careful. I ain't going to really say too much. Hey, but that's what it's all about right there. That's what it's really about. He said even healthcare workers are hesitant to get the you know what. It's all about them jabs, baby. You know? But the jabs are ultimately leading you to that karagma, the chip. That's what it is, man. You know, it's all a it's <laughs> it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Because the the virus has uh been variable. We've had good months, bad months. We're seeing numbers rise now uh, in this region. And so until we get through this period, we're going to see a lot of volatility in all these measures. And that makes them hard to read. So for me as a policymaker, in that kind of situation, I want to hold steady, make sure we get through this period. Then we can start to normalize once we get through this. When you say get through this period, how long do you think it lasts? Well, again, if you talk to epidemiologists, not economists, uh, they'll say sometime in the fall, we should start to get herd immunity. I'm a little concerned, though. Some of the things were... Herd immunity. So they want the majority of masses to be, you know what? And if you talk to epidemiologists, not economists, uh, they'll say sometime in the fall, we should start to get herd immunity. I'm a little concerned, though. Some of the things we're hearing right now is vaccine hesitancy is real. We even hear this from our healthcare contacts, right? Healthcare workers themselves are reluctant to get the vaccine. So we need to make sure we get this vaccine into people's arms as quickly as possible. Well
Operation Warp Speed. There are companies telling you about uh, finding employees. You're, you're focused now on uh, getting unemployment down as low as you can. Some companies seem to be saying they can't find enough people. Yeah. Other companies say uh, we don't need any more people yet. If Eric this place is through. If you're paying attention and you're paying attention to these financial analysts, you know, that are that really are keeping it a buck. Because even this, uh, what is it? I think that's in Psalms also. Uh, so shall they make their tongues uh, fall upon themselves. They tell it on themselves, man. It's obvious. You know, you got these health. Um, I, I'm going to stop it here. Cause I, I, it, you can watch it yourself. You can finish watching it. But he ain't, he ain't doing nothing but lying, you know. But you got to be able to see through the lies, man, you know. But, hey, you got these health officials, these lawyers, these different people speaking out, man. We at the end, man, you know. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai threw a big monkey wrench in Esau's plans, man. That's why ultimately he just they just gonna have to come hard body. They just gonna come on come on out with it, man. You know, and it, they, it's gonna start with the demonization of the men of the Lord and the famine of the word. You know, because we are, we really are was was throwing a monkey wrench in things, man. The truth, this word, okay, this sound doctrine, okay, that's coming out from. Uh, the, the, starting with the head apostles on down through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay, and the Rakah Kadash, all right? But anyway, I'm going to close out, man. I'm going to read this one more time because I, I love this scripture, man. Habakkuk 2 and 6, because that's how that's Esau, Edom's pride and butter, man, that thick clay that I bought you, that debt, that interest, that usury, you know, that he always, he always want to lock you into some kind of contract with some kind of interest or some, you know, some, you know, that's how this devil works, man. You know, and it would, and and the weights that he uses are unjust, man. You got unjust weights, man. You know, you know, and that's an abomination in the sight of the Lord, man. This damn paper money, this fiscal money, this funny money, you know, that ain't real fucking money, you know. Habakkuk two and six shall not all these take up a parable against them and a taunting proverb against them and say, woe. To him that increases that which is not his. And how did you get, how did you damn devils get anything you have? At all your lands, wherever you at, whether you in the Americas, okay, you you in the, the UK, you in uh, France, Russia, wherever the hell you devils are at, that's not your damn land, okay? You know, how did you get it? You stole it, you know? Starting going back to Alexander the Creek, okay? You see? Woe to him that increases that which is not his. How long? Okay, not much longer. Sand in the hourglass. Yahweh Yahweh Shai set the bounds which he can't pass, man. That's what that's what it says in Job. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. That's a lot. Let me go down some more. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? That's your enemies, man. That's your uh, allies, man. They're going to turn on you. They're going to bite you. They're going to actually uh, uh, shoot arrows and missiles on you, man, and burn you with fire, okay? Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake, that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for, and thou shalt be for booties unto them, meaning spoils, okay? They're going to destroy you, because thou hast spoiled many nations and all the remnant of the people. It says, like it says, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Because of of because of men's blood and for the violence, how did you get this land? How did you get the Americas, the land, you know? How did you get this land? Who was here before? The Lord's chosen people, man. Okay, the northern kingdom. Okay? You see? It could it says because of the because of men's blood and for the violence of the land of the city and of all that dwell therein. Okay? I could keep going. This whole chapter is good. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house. Because the whole house of Esau, Edom is going to be cut off. They're going to get Obadiah 118. Okay, because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai deals with nations. All right. That's why it said, tells you in, uh, what's that, Isaiah 14. Okay, prepare slaughter. Okay. Woe to him that, cov woe to him that coveteth, coveteth an evil covetousness to his house. That he may set his nest on high, read Obadiah, okay, that he may be de that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by con by cutting off many people, and who's the and the number one people that you cut off was the Lord's chosen people, Yasharala, Israel. You fucked up, 
Okay, you touched the apple of the Lord's eye. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house. That's why there's shameful spewing on your glory. Okay, your skirts being lifted, you're being exposed. You goddamn devils. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people. And thou hast sinned against thy soul. Okay. It says, for the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. Yeah, woe to the bloody city, man, which is America. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. And that's sin upon sin, and this place is laden with iniquity, okay? This is a hypocritical nation, you know? But anyway, I don't want to rot this out. I was at a fine. You, you got the idea, man. Hey, we're close, man. Just if you, if you, if you got the eyes to see it, you're watching. Hey, this place is circling the damn drain. This place is through. It's holding on by huh, life support, man. You know, any day now, any day now, Lord's will. Hey, that's why the spirit was on Elder Apostle Tahar to coin the year 2021, the year of hastening the coming of our Lord. Yeah, how about you, shy? And you can see we're close, man. We're close. All right. Keep pushing. Shalom. Wa abad babo.